Dear students, good morning. We are going to see today the general anatomy. What is human anatomy? Human anatomy is the science that deals with the structure of the human body. Definition Anatomy is the study of structure of the body. Subdivisions of anatomy The major subdivisions of anatomy are Gross anatomy or macroscopic anatomy, microscopic anatomy, embryology, surface anatomy, and applied anatomy. Gross anatomy or macroscopic anatomy, gross or macro means huge. So, gross anatomy or macroscopic anatomy is the study of the body, organs or the parts with naked eye. For example, if you take the spleen, liver, kidney, lungs, heart, you can see with the naked eye and ray. There is no need for microscope or any lens. Microscopic anatomy or histology. Histology is the study of tissues with the aid of microscope that means if you want to see the structure of liver or study the structure of skin you cannot study with the naked eye so this is done with the aid of microscope that is with the help of microscope you are studying the structures so it's known as microscopic anatomy or histology embryology embryology is the study of development before birth that is from the day one of fertilization the distribution of the egg and sperm from the day one till the baby is born okay so what are the stages of development during this period and what are the changes taking place so studying about this developmental changes is known as embryology <coughs> surface anatomy Surface anatomy is studying the deeper parts in relation to skin. Applied anatomy. Application of knowledge of anatomy during medical and surgical practice. So you read the what are the structures present in the body and its general features and what are the relations etc etc. And this you are using during your internship during the practice in medicine or during surgery. Gross or macroscopic anatomy is divided into regional anatomy and systemic anatomy. Regional anatomy in this the body is divided into various regions head and neck and brain, trunk which includes thorax, abdomen and pelvis and the limbs or extremities which includes upper and lower limbs so you are dividing the body into various regions and reading for example the dental students will read only or concentrate only on the head and neck and brain when compared to other parts of the body okay. systemic anatomy in this you are concentrating only on one particular system okay for example if you take digestive system the oral cavity is present in the head and neck region the esophagus is present in the thoracic region. The stomach is present in the abdominal region. While the rectum and anal canal is present in the pelvic region. Even though it is present in various regions, you have studied only the organs associated with particular system. So this type of reading is known as systemic anatomy. So the systemic anatomy includes osteology. Osteo means bone. Logi or logos means study. So study of bones. In lower classes, you will have studied about skeletal system. So that is osteology. Myology, myo means muscle. So study of muscles or muscular system. Arthrology, ortho means joints. So study of joints. Angiology, angio means blood vessels. 
So study of blood vessels, blood and lymph vessels is known as angiology. Splanchnology. Splanchnology is the study of soft parts or soft organs present in our body. This includes respiratory system, endocrine glands, digestive system and urogenital system. <coughs> now we will see some of the terms used in anatomy. Okay. First, now our anatomical position. What is anatomical position? Standing erect with eyes looking forwards, arms by the side, palm facing forwards, lower limbs are parallel with the toes directed forwards. So this is the anatomical position or cadaveric position. Prone position and supine position. These are the two positions in which the patient will lie on the hospital. Okay. So prone position it is a recumbent position with face downwards. Supine position, a recumbent position with face upwards. That is the patient is lying either with the face downwards or the patient will be lying with the face facing upwards. So this is the prone and supine position. Mixed sagittal plane. Now we are going to see the various planes in which the body is okay, sectioned. Okay. Mixed sagittal plane or Median plane. What is mid sagittal plane or median plane? Okay. It is a plane which divides the body into two equal halves. That is right and left. It is also known as median plane. Sagittal plane. It is a plane running parallel to the median plane or mid sagittal plane. So this is a mid sagittal or median plane. So either cutting parallel to that is known as sagittal plane. Coronal plane. Okay. There is a suture in the skull running like this transversely. Okay. It is known as coronal suture. Okay. A plane which is running in this suture is known as coronal plane. So what is coronal plane? It is a plane which runs in a vertical axis but perpendicular to the mid sagittal plane. So this is the mid sagittal plane. So it will be running like this in the coronal plane or coronal suture line. Okay. So in mid sagittal plane the body is divided into right and left equal halves whereas in sag coron coronal plane the body is divided in vertical plane but the face will fall in front and the back of the head will fall backwards. So you are cutting the body like this. Transverse plane. It runs perpendicular to the long axis of the body or long axis of the limbs. So you are studying the lower class as cross section. That is nothing but the transverse section. So this is the long axis of the body. Perpendicular to the long axis is like this you are cutting the body, the transverse section or cross section. So this is the long axis of the limb. You are cutting like this. So this is the transverse plane. Terms of relationship. These are the terms used in anatomy. So you should know the basic terms which are used in anatomy. Terms of relationship. Number one, anterior. Anterior means towards front. Any structure which is lying in front is known as anterior. Okay. Posterior, towards the back. So if there are two organs, one is front and one is the back. This is known as it is present anteriorly and this is present posteriorly. So towards front means anterior, towards the back means posterior. Medial, medial means towards the midline. Anything line which is close to the midline is known as medial. Lateral, the structures which are away from the midline are known as lateral. Superior and inferior, superior or cephalic. That means anything which is close to the head is known as superior. Inferior means which is close to the foot. It is also known as caudal. Inferior or caudal. Superficial D. Superficial means structures which is nearer to the skin. Deep means 
the structures which are away from the skin. For example, if you take the body, the outermost is skin and if you remove the skin, you can see the fascia connective tissue. If you remove that, you can see the muscles. If you remove the muscles, you can see the bone. So bone covered by the muscle, then covered by the fascia, then skin. So which is near the skin is known as superficial, whereas which is away from the skin, that is which is lying deeper is known as deep. Proximal distal, this is especially used in case of limbs. Okay. Proximal towards the trunk, distal away from the trunk. So for example, if you take that digit, you have three phalanges. Proximal phalanx, middle phalanx, distal phalanx. Proximal means which is present okay, above, distal means which is present below. Terms of movements. Number one, flexion. So you have to stand in an identical position. Okay, now you can learn the movements easily. Flexion to bend or make an angle. See, I am bending my trunk. Okay, so the body is bending. So if you bend your body, it is called flexion. So flexion means to bend or make an angle. I will explain in case of elbow joint. This is elbow joint. Arm, forearm. So flexion of forearm. See, it is straight now. This is flexion of forearm. So when you are trying to flex, there is a bend or angle is formed. So this is flexion. Extension to erect or make straight. See, now it is in flexed condition. It again going to the back to the normal position. So this is extension to erect or make straight. Abduction, adduction. Abduction, movement away from the midline. Adduction, moving towards the midline. Circumduction. It's a combined movement of flexion, extension, adduction and abduction. So the arm already I told you, this is flexion, extension, adduction and abduction. So circumduction is a combined movement of flexion, extension, adduction and abduction describing a cone. So this is the abduction. See I am drawing a cone, this is the center point and this is the circle. So it looks like a cone. So in this you can see the arm is flexed, adductor, extender and abductor. So this is the circumduction. Rotation. It is a movement taking place in vertical axis. Either medial or lateral rotation is possible. So if you take the head, this is a vertical axis. Either, see so this is a midline, moving away from the midline. Okay, again coming back to the normal. You see the nose is going outside and coming towards the midline. So either lateral rotation or medial rotation is possible. So this is the rotation. Pronation and supination. It is a movement taking place in mid flexed forearm. So, in the mid flexed forearm, there is a movement taking place, and that is known as pronation and supination. So, pronation, it is a movement taking place in mid flexed forearm so that the arm faces downwards. So, if you do like this, this is pronation. Supination, it is a movement taking place in mid flexed forearm so that the palm faces upwards. This is supination. So you can see this one in screwing movement. So pronation, supination, locking and unlocking movement. Protraction, retraction. Protraction means moving or gliding forwards. Retraction means moving or gliding backwards. It is possible in only two places. One is in case of scapula, the shoulder blade. And another is in case of mandible, the lower jaw. Okay, see, this is protraction, this is retraction. In case of scapula, when you try to take something, okay, from the table or anything by stretching a hand, the scapula moves or glides slightly on the posterior surface of the thorax, okay, forwards, and this is known as protraction. When you are coming to normal, the scapula glides or moves backwards on the thoracic surface and that is known as a retraction. So these are the basic terms used in anatomy. So you learn this. Unless you are thorough in this, okay, you cannot go into any lessons. Thank you.